You are looking at a linothorax. This is a type of tube and yoke cuirass uh, used throughout the ancient world, uh, particularly around the Mediterranean, uh, and most notably uh, by the Greeks and the Persians, for that matter. Uh, this particular piece of armor uh, is made from flax linen, animal glue, and leather. The leather is used in the core of the armor, as well as the core of the yoke, which are the straps on top. The linen is applied 11, la 11 layers thick around the entire body, in between which is multiple layers of glue are applied. The linen is also used on the patches on the chest, that's a reinforcement plate, as well as in the scales in, on the yoke, right here. The reinforcement plates in the chest are also 11 layers thick, while the scales are 6 layers, but as you can see they double up, so there's an effective 12 layers. In this test, three arrows were shot repeatedly into the armor to measure its effectiveness. The three arrows that were fired are from left to right, a Scythian tree labat. And this arrow is 24 grams or 370 grains in mass and had an initial velocity of 172 feet per second. A tanged broadhead that had an initial mass or had a mass of 49 grams or 756 grains and an initial velocity of 146 feet per second. And a Saxon broadhead that had a mass of 43 grams or 664 grains and an initial velocity of 152 feet per second. The very first arrow that was fired was the Scythian Trilobot, and it was fired right here into the armor. The second arrow that was fired was a Saxon broadhead, and it was fired here into the upper plate. The third that was fired was a tanged broadhead, and it was fired right here in the middle into the upper portion of the second plate. During the second round of fire, uh, test firing, the first arrow that was fired was again a Scythian tree labat, and it was fired here into the center chest plate. The second arrow that was fired was fired here into the yoke, into one of these uh, linen scales. The third arrow that was fired was a Saxon broadhead, and it was also fired here into the upper reinforcement plate of the chest. During the third round of test firings, the first arrow that was fired was a tanged broadhead. It was fired right here into the joint between the first and second chest reinforcement plates. The second arrow that was fired was a Saxon broadhead. It was fired into the lamellar male plating, or the lamellar uh, steel plating around the torso. And then the third arrow that was fired was also a Saxon broadhead, and it was also fired into the lamellar steel plating around the torso. Uh, the results of this were the first arrow fired, the Scythian tree labat, penetrated through the armor through the linen liner inside to a depth of about two and a half, two and three quarter inches. Now, this could have been potentially a fatal blow and not the desired result if you were to be wearing this armor. All of the, 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 the second Scythian tree labot that was fired, the one that was fired into the chest, it penetrated through the outer linen layers as well as the leather underneath, but it did not penetrate through the linen liner inside. The linen liner gave about hmm, one inch and the arrow remained lodged in the chest. As long as the individual's chest was not up against the armor, the individual would have escaped without any harm and may have escaped without any injury regardless if the chest cavity gave when the arrow struck. The same result was found for 
the other two arrows that were fired into the more up armored portions of the armor. The tanged broadhead had an average penetration beyond the inside of the armor of about two thirds of an inch. The Saxon broadhead had an average penetration beyond the inside of the armor of about half of an inch. But neither of those penetrated through the inner lining. The two arrows that were fired into the lamellar steel plating failed to penetrate it. The second arrow that was fired actually snapped the head off of the arrow on impact and severely bent the tip. Now bear in mind that all of these materials are available or were available uh, in and around the ancient Mediterranean with the exception of steel. Uh, it is nearly impossible to find bronze or iron lamellar plating uh, so steel had to suffice as did these two steel arrows on the right. In addition, steel lamellar plating, bronze lamellar plating, or iron lamellar plating would be extremely expensive, more expensive than linen, and very heavy. Uh, further testing will most likely be done, and when it is done, uh, more reinforcement will be applied to the entire armor to see how much linen is actually required to stop an arrow before it penetrates more than half of an inch into the armor. If this test is any clue to how much linen will be required, a total of approximately 22 sheets of linen laminated together should do the trick. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.